this is unreal that the show is ending, that this is the last episode. I can't believe it. I've been procrastinating watching this all day because I really don't want it to end, even though I'm pretty happy with the way the last episode turned out. I felt so relieved at Ed's realization and his rescue of Al, and even Hohenheim's death, you know, even though it was tragic, it was beautiful. You know, his life was beautiful, even though I've enjoyed the show for the duration. The previous episode, I feel like, just took it to a whole new level. It rounded the whole thing out, and so... I haven't watched this episode yet, but my feeling is that it's going to be a victory lap in some ways. I actually suspect that there might be some danger left, but I have a feeling my ideas about that will come up naturally in this episode. But I guess, try as you may, you can't hold on. Nothing left to do but to watch it. I've had something like a ritual, which I've never shown on camera, but before every episode, I usually listen to the next time voiceover. It often contains thematic things to think about. This time I'm actually going to watch it, because I feel like I've already gotten the meat of the show. I don't think there are going to be spoilers left, really. There's no such thing as an absolute and final ending. Right. For it is always followed by a new beginning. The future is yours to shape as you wish. Craft it with hope upon a foundation of peace. Next time on Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, the final episode. Journey's End. End. That was beautiful. Step forward. Embrace your life and the world that nurtures it. I love that. And here we go. Can you tell me which room Colonel Roy Mustang is in? Well, can I ask what your relation to the patient is? I'm his private practice doctor. Hey, look who it is. Helen Knox is here to see him. We get to see him again. He looks happy. Final episode, Journey's End. Ah, hey there, young lady. Well, this is a nice surprise. It is a nice surprise. <laughs> so how's he doing? Has this whole thing got him down? The farming method that's used in the Ishvalan region. They mainly double crop. He's more determined than ever. That's correct. Not a bad guess. Oh, <laughs> give me some credit. I've yeah, he's, he hasn't lost a step. Before now. He's hoping to make amends with Ishval. He wants to make things right before becoming the Fuhrer. Higher Scar. I envisioned a better future. And this is the price I had to pay for it. And are you okay with that? Wow. Well, I wouldn't say okay, but still, I won't let it stop me from moving forward either. He looks so different, doesn't he? I mean, that makes sense, right? After all he's been through. But he seems more free, less burdened. He said, I envisioned a better future and this is the price I had to pay for it. There's something really beautiful about that and so true about that. I mean, there's nothing great without some kind of sacrifice. And that applies to all the characters, right? There is some equivalent exchange for the things that they desire. That happens in a very physical and literal sense, right? But I think there's something else happening that is more about the human experience and the human journey, which is probably best represented by Ed, which is that a lot of their journeys are goal-directed, but they're also personal journeys and they cannot progress in their journey and become the people they need to be to achieve their goals without sacrificing sacred parts of themselves. Ed gave up one of the most important elements of his self-identity, and in doing so, shed some of his pride, some of his arrogance, some of his denial about the world, his lack of appreciation for certain things. Roy lost his eyes, but I feel like more personally, we saw him lose some of his hatred and anger, maybe some of his zealotry about his ideas. Same thing with Scar. Scar lost his vengeance. All or most of them had things that were keeping them going, that drove them forward into the world, and all those things were great and really important to get them going, but they weren't the truth. And so we've seen so many of these characters become amazing, or more amazing than they already were, I should say, just by shedding some of these things and accepting things that are. They had to become that best combination of who they were when that meets the reality of the world. It's fallen war of extermination. And that's where everything went wrong. You have a lot of work to do. You're right there, both for our country and for you and me. It's time to correct it. Correct it? I'm calling off the military occupation, and then I'll return their holy land to the Ishvalans left living in the slums. There's still a lot to be done. Yeah, we long road ahead. We'd all be dead now if it weren't for Scar. <laughs> That's true. Friends. Very That's true. At least we can do to repay them. Colonel, I brought all the materials you asked for. We know that this won't erase our sins, but it's not too late to fix things. <laughs> this room just reeks of optimism. <laughs> Good to see a, a taste of his old self, just for old time's sake. I brought a philosopher's stone with me. I believe that it might be able to return your eyesight. I have no right to speak for those whose lives I've taken. So I'm asking this as a personal request. Let me heal you with this stone so you can restore Ishval. I know some people who might not like this. Especially Full Metal. He's talking to me too. There's someone else who needs that stone even more than I do. You can heal me after you heal him. Putting others first once again. 
From our hearts to your home, you've reached the Havoc General Store. Yeah, he's talking about Havoc. Hey, Breda, what's up? So Havoc might have a big role to play in the reconstruction as How well. I guess they all will. Miles! Did you Miss him. Me? The only interest I had in saving you was for your Alka history. <laughs> plans do change. Colonel Mustangs requested Major Miles to assist him in dealing with the Shvalan affairs. Good choice. So, I thought you might be able to assist me. Not as Scar, the killer, that is. But as a true Ishvalan. Another great choice. Lots of great choices so far. <laughs> Will you help me spread the teachings of Ishvala? We can't allow our religion and culture to die out. That would be the death of our race. And this is our chance. We can rescue our people. Is this why I was saved from death? Have you given me this responsibility as my reason to continue living, brother? I accept. I'll join you. From now on, I'll follow you wherever you see fit. Wow. Well, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but one thing I like about the show that differs from most shows, I think, is a lot of shows feel like if a character does something wrong at some point in their lives, they must die. Redemption can happen for the characters, but often the redemption is tied up in their death. While I understand why that can be satisfying, I kind of like the complexity of having them survive, you know? And this show does a great job of that. Scar aside, like a lot of our heroes participated in severe atrocities during wartime, but they're allowed to continue living and they're allowed to do good. And I think that to me is so much more of an appealing message because I don't think we should think of people as as solid entities unchanging over time. We look at people as a snapshot, and it's easy to judge that snapshot based on the worst elements of it, but the truth is way more complicated. People are always changing, people are always growing and learning, and time is a very powerful force. And there are no good or bad people, I think. As difficult as it is to swallow sometimes, I think a person consists of what principles they hold now, and if they follow those principles, and what they do next. And so I'm thrilled that Roy Mustang can do great things, and that Riza can do great things, and that Scar can do great things. And I like the way Riza put it, that they'll never undo things, they'll never really make it right but they can you know they can fix the current situation they can try to make things better i also like the fact that all of them are finding new things to focus on because that is sort of the lie in a lot of these stories right like the happily ever after thing where you're now a complete person but for me i think meaning in life is not derived from an achievement it's not derived from one particular journey it's the moment to moment interplay of self with world it's not so much having done something or having achieved something it's about living why don't you tell us your real name do we get to find out I've died twice now. I'm neither of the people I once was. I don't need a name. Call me anything. Very well then. You take care, Ishvalan. Thank you, Armstrong. I love you. And thank you, Scar. What a journey. Hey. Are you okay? He looks so good. Look at him. My muscles had atrophied so much on the other side. Dude, you are not looking good. You can go ahead if you want. Nope. You'll get there. We left home together, and that's how we're gonna return. Thank you, brother. Huh? Thanks for what? <laughs> oh, never mind. Whatever. Quit acting so weird. <laughs> I, uh, hope May's okay. <laughs> You've got nothing to worry about. She's in trustworthy hands. And she'll be back for you, Al. <laughs> you know what this means. My clan won. <laughs> yeah, but they've been through too much at this point. As whole new perspective goes, the yao family will protect yours at all costs of course yeah i mean duh i accepted a homunculus as a friend now didn't i look i don't know about you but i feel like if my soul was used as a gateway to open a door of the moon for someone to become god that would change my perspective on life slightly there would be some changes at least at first i'd probably go back to my normal life at some point <laughs> I guess He's learned a thing or two after about all. greed, yeah. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> what a journey they've been on. Yeah. Count on it. Thank you, Ling and Lanfan. You aiming to be the future Prince of Shing? That could happen, Come couldn't on. it? She is a nice girl though. <laughs> Forget about that. What about you and Winry? <laughs> yeah, that's still the, the biggest unresolved thing, I think. Oh, does she? She doesn't even know, does she? This is gonna be huge.
Time to let it all out. <laughs> Winry's one of the few people who would really understand. Dummies. Welcome <laughs> What, no wrench this time? Good to be back. Beautiful. What a great choice. Full metal alchemist. <laughs> Roy's team. Even though Winry didn't play a huge role in the finale, to me she feels like a silent but integral part of the, the whole thing. She has sort of epitomized a lot of the qualities that I think a lot of the other characters came to be through their journey. She kind of started out great. I think it's her support for the brothers partly that, that made them who they are, you know, that made them as good as they are. The show focuses very heavily on Ed and Al, but I think it's been made clear that they're a trio, you know, they've sort of been in it since the beginning. So it's uh, it's very moving for me to see Winry get the realization that, you know, things have worked out because we know how much that means to her. <laughs> nice. Fast forward. This should not be this hard. Damn, looking like a man. It was worth it. Brother, what's taking so long? I've been thinking about something lately. Me too. And I bet we're thinking the same thing. I don't know exactly what they're talking about, but they do have to figure out what's next, you know? As the prologue said, the journey's never really over. And these are great kids. They have a lot of good they can do in the world. I mean, they're not even kids anymore. Mustang's hard at work in the East, and General Armstrong's holding down the Northern Front with our iron fists. I might be able to remain the Fuhrer for some time with the two of them by my side. He's the Fuhrer? I'm grateful to have them. You aren't going to turn the throne over to a younger man? Hm. Not just yet. A mistress needs a man of experience. Hmm. Oh, does it? That sounds a bit like something my late husband might have said. I never <gasps> met a man more devoted to his work. I remember. I doubt that I can compare it to his... devotion to our country. Aw. Now I don't feel bad about saying aw. They can fix it, can't they? It'll be fine, honey. He's a very precocious two-year-old. <laughs> We're gonna keep an eye on him a little while longer. The guy has a butt on the back if of his head. <laughs> to develop any odd behaviors, you understand what must be done. I'll see to it that never has to happen. He'll be all right, I believe. I guess it doesn't matter how old you get. New possibilities are always exciting. <laughs> Is he talking about the romance with Bradley's wife? <laughs> all right, Grumman. For all this compassion from people like you and Mr. Hughes. We feel like it's our turn to repay the happiness that's been given to us. Look at his suit! Isn't that like <laughs> equivalent exchange? <laughs> no. It's equivalent if you take ten and then you give ten back. But if you take ten and then you add something of yourself, you return eleven. It's not much, but it's an all new principle that we're trying to establish. <laughs> and now we just have to go out and prove that it actually works. I'm so glad to hear him say that because that's something I've been thinking about since fairly early on in the series where you do wonder, right? I mean, when you think about existence and humans and the world, it can seem to just be the result of a lot of small, moving, but explainable parts. But in some sense, it seems to me that one of the things that existence is trying to do is grow. And while it seems like there's natural atrophy to material things, it seems like there's expansion to potential, to possibilities. For me, and I'm definitely biased because I'm a human being, I feel like human beings are way more than the result of their physical structures. We're not just our materials. Even if we are totally a result or byproduct of our material state, it's not a sufficient summary for all of humanity and its potential. Even if the basis of it is simple, you know, even if the basis is just cause and effect, the result, to me at least, seems to be greater than just that linear process. So I take it you've got something in mind? What's next? We're still haunted by the memory of a little girl that we once knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We weren't able to save her. We all we are. We'll never forget that. No, we won't. <laughs> more, uh, more noises Zampano. from Zampano. Hey, Al, there's plenty of food. Dig in. Thanks. Food, finally. I'm gonna travel all over the East and study everything I can about their cultures. It's a big world. I want to see all I can and learn all I can and meet new people. And eat all I can and sleep. <laughs> so your brother isn't going with you? Nope. I'm going to take the East. And brothers heading west to learn from that region. Modern day sages. It's an enormous world, and we want to see it all. You deserve it. They're gonna do great things. Please keep the screws tightened. Yeah. Dry it off immediately when you get out of the tub. 
All I hear is love. Well, whenever that does happen, just call me to make an appointment. Sure. So formal at this late stage. <laughs> <laughs> Having second thoughts. Tell her how you feel. What's wrong? Listen, Winry. Well, what? Just come out and say it. Equivalent exchange! I'll give <laughs> half of my life to you if you give half of yours to me! This is so Ed. What an Ed way to put that. But sweet, I guess. If you know him. <laughs> Come on. You have to treat yeah. everything like alchemy. The whole equivalent exchange thing is just nonsense. What'd you say? Uh, it's nonsense. How about I just give you my whole life? Well, that's the answer that you wanted, right? <laughs> Forget the phrasing. Yeah, you said it. That came out. Uh, Can't take it back. It. 90? We all heard you. 80%? 70. That's not enough. But 85... Yeah, 85 is a good number. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up! I'm sorry, really. <laughs> Edward! You are so incredible. <laughs> you knocked equivalent exchange flat on its butt in just a few words. Uh, and what's that mean? Are you making fun of me? Not at all. <laughs> Thanks for cheering me up. I'll miss you. Yeah, Rue's always sort of been the smartest. In her way. Come home soon. <laughs> He'll be home soon. Do you really think he's gonna pass up a chance for that Winry apple pie? <laughs> I'm done. It's been a long series, alright. Why can't those boys just settle down for a while? It's not who they it's are. It's good for them to keep moving. Yes, keep moving. Men who just sit around doing nothing are boring. <laughs> There's no such thing as a painless lesson. They just don't exist. Right. Sacrifices are necessary. You can't gain anything without losing something first. Although, if you can endure that pain and walk away from it, you'll find that you now have a heart strong enough to overcome any obstacle. Yeah, a heart made full metal. Aww. They make a great team, Scar and Miles. Looking good as Emperor. The new Madam Christmas? Whoa, this is flashing way ahead. Nice. Like father, like son, traveling the world. Wow. Well, that gave me everything I ever wanted. <laughs> Sometimes you give up hope. You know, you think, surely I've seen everything good. You know, surely I've seen everything that's really top tier amazing. But you haven't. You know, there's so many great things out there still. And I can say without any kind of buttering up that this show is one of the best I've ever seen in my life. I've enjoyed it from the very beginning, basically. Like, it makes it clear so early on that it's a story of real depth. I think where I really got hooked for the first time is the all is one, one is all episode. That's when I knew that this was going to be something special. And it only got more special from there. The things that I picked up really early on were how great the characters were and how human they feel and how many of them there are without that feeling like a burden or feeling overwhelming and how each of their journeys is distinct but also the same and beautiful in similar ways which are ways relevant to the human experience and to growing as a person and to becoming realized and to becoming heroes and all those things but it really was these last couple of episodes that made me feel like this was a show for the ages the resolution was so satisfying the lessons were so satisfying i feel like it was exactly on on point it hit exactly the right notes for me and i feel like it was very well developed from the beginning a lot of the themes that were brought up in the the last couple episodes were things that I had thought about and talked about in this reaction series, I think. So it was all there from the beginning, but part of the tension for me was the danger of them maybe not realizing that. You know, it could have turned out to be a tragedy. Had they not made those sacrifices willingly, right, and with their eyes open, and used the lessons they learned, and the people that they met along the way to become the best versions of themselves, and ultimately to understand what was truly important about their individual journeys. The idea of sacrifice is so beautiful and true to me, because we see the characters sacrificing a lot of things that are physical, but really I think the, the more meaningful sacrifice they all make is they sacrifice who they are, or who they were at the beginning, to who they are at the end. And the backbone for that, I think, is their values, 
and their values when applied to the world and how they learn and grow as a result of their experiences while also seeking truth. In just 64 episodes, I feel like I've seen these characters live entire lives and their lives are only beginning. Earlier I said that I think there are still challenges for the characters and for the world. And while the show didn't directly go into those things, I think that is one of the themes that they explored in this epilogue where you got to keep moving forward, right? Things will keep happening. Purpose is something you continuously find. There will always be new challenges. There will always be new struggles. The politics of the country will not be easy. Living their lives will not be easy for any of the characters. But all you can do is keep moving forward with eyes open. This ending gave me a feeling similar to what The Last Airbender gave me, where it gave me everything I wanted for the characters and more. Like, they accomplished their goals and they became great people. It wasn't one or the other, right? Like in The Last Airbender, I thought Zuko would have to just accept not being Fire Lord. But no, he became the best Zuko he could be and became Fire Lord, right? The same thing in this show. Ed, for a lot of the show, I think, was in pretty big psychic danger where he was so fixated on, on getting Al's body back. And there was something unhealthy about his fixation and the way he was approaching it. He was overly prideful. He was over-reliant on alchemy or science, but he realized all that and he got Al's body back. For me, that is heroic. That is sort of the ultimate, the ideal to look up to, where you become the best possible version of yourself and you also crush it, you know? Why not aim for both? I usually have like teary at this point when finishing something, but the epilogue just made me feel so good. It was so wholesome, which I desperately needed after some of the brutality of the show and, you know, especially in the finale with everyone dying. The good news is, like usual, I've built in a little bit of a, a cushion, so this is not totally the end. I am going to do a Q&A for the show. I'm also going to watch the blooper reel, which comes highly recommended, so it's not quite over. There's still a chance to talk about the show in a little more depth, and I guess to unwind emotionally because this was some powerful stuff. But I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for following the series, for being so supportive. I really mean it when I say I have the best community of people ever. I didn't get a single spoiler for the show, I don't think. If I did, they were very minor. The comments been incredible like you guys continue to blow my mind with your analysis and your your observations and your character breakdowns and things like that it's just it's truly incredible i feel like i get more utility from from you guys and from your comments than than i actually provide <laughs> but whether you're a longtime supporter or whether you are new for the show i'm deeply grateful for all the love support kindness that you've shown me during these 64 episodes of the show and i say it every time and i, I truly mean it if this is the last time you ever watch one of my videos i wish you all the best in your life i wish you happiness health, success, and a satisfying and amazing journey along the way. So that's going to conclude the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood reaction series, which is just, it's insane. It hurts, but it hurts so good. <laughs> but I'll see you very soon for the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Q&A.